Hello and welcome back. We roll into today's video with content regarding crabs, water, and lots of electrical car chargers. Thanks for watching, enjoy. Good morning. We're in an underground car park. Today we're gonna to be installing a car charger into every single space of this 30 space car park. If you've ever wondered how to do that, if you have a multi-story, an underground car park, or just a really big house, well then, Keep watching, you'll find out. All right, so this here is Alex, and Alex is one of the directors of South Coast TV. How are we doing, guys? <laughs> and uh, he is a local company to me in Bournemouth, or I should say I'm a local company to him, really, because he was here first. <laughs> and this is him and Pete's job, or his and Pete's job. Um, so we'll talk you through it. There is 30 car chargers going in here. Um, not all of them are actually going to be live points. Some of them are going to be like these dud units so that the residents have the option to upgrade in future. But explain how that works and where we're coming from. Because obviously 37 kilowatt single phase car chargers is an awful lot of, um, of power really in terms of your typical car charger install. So this is the car park here. Step one will be getting power. So I'll show you where that is. So this is the mains intake room here. So we've got the main supply coming in here, three-phase supply through the isolator into this switch. So the plan will be to put a three-phase Hager board there on that wall. Um, we're going to drop that supply out, move that into this new board, Hager blocks onto that supply, or even to be honest, just isolate it and bring new tails out and into that three-phase board. That is then going to go out through this wall round, come out the wall there, along this wall, down and into this, what is a boiler room here. Then we'll come inside the boiler room, along, and then we're talking about on that wall there, mounting a three-phase Matty device. Um, is, does that sound about right to you? That's about right, yeah. So like Corey said, round into here, that's going to be a fun part. And then on that back wall there, we're going to have a three-phase Matty that's got three 32-amp five-pole outputs and then we're gonna follow into the car park and distribute the circuits accordingly. Perfect, let's go. So obviously we can't just be slinging cables around the car park willy nilly. So we've got 100 mil metal tray here and that's gonna be inverted on the ceiling using shallow strap and then metal tie wraps around the perimeter. I think job number one for myself and Alex, Al, what? You can call me whatever you like. <laughs> I don't let's, say that. Let's go with Al. <laughs> First job for us is gonna be slinging this tray, getting it in and creating a route for the lads so that when they come through, they have something to attach onto. So let's do good. some tray slinging. Let's get it going. Right, so this is the containment here. God, man, I had a bit of a nightmare this morning getting to work. Fortunately, Alex came and gave me a tow, which was really kind of him. This is just really embarrassing. What a day, what starts of the day. Um, but this is the containment here. So I feel I don't want to just throw round terms, presuming that everyone knows what it is. So I'll show you exactly what it is that we're actually working with. So this here is Unistrut. So this is called shallow strut, which is half of the depth of the standard size Unistrut. This here is 100 mil cable tray. So the plan is when we say we're going to invert it, it means we're going to be mounting this onto the Unistrut on the roof, but it will be upside down like that. So that the actual bent ridges will be facing down and we'll be cable tying with metal cable ties onto the underside of that. So we have some 10 mil cable, a big old drum. First job will be to start grinding this down, start making our strut pieces. I can then attach that to the ceiling, attach our tray to it and start running cables. Right, so we're currently just dipping the ends and I'll show you a little hack. When you cut Unistrat, obviously this is galvanized. Um, so if you have a bare end that is exposed, you've cut off that galvanized bit and then you'll find it rusts. But rather than spray the tips with zinc, you're gonna find that if you do that, it ends up going everywhere, it ends up running. Instead, I saw this online. I think this was Mike from Residual Current that I got this off. Make a nice little bit of it. Get your end, that's not got the zinc on it now. 
dip, dip, just make sure it's all covered. And there you go. Just so much cleaner, no mess. Do you like that one? Great little tip. Can't take credit for that. Great tip. This is Pete, by the way. I don't think Pete said hi yet. How are you doing, guys? Good, time for a crash zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so we've also got end caps. So end caps are something that are utterly unnecessary, but when you don't see them, you do judge. Absolutely. I'm like, if you go into an underground car park, every time, it, it, as an electrician, an underground car park is just a place to judge, isn't it? It's yeah. like a, you either go and look and go, oh wow, that looks really nice, or oh wow, that looks really rough. So we've coated it with galve spray, and now we've got end caps on. So then we use channel nuts, and that will mount the, um, oh, it's the van. Oh, I really want this van. I've just got a message from someone about a van. So yeah, I found this van and I absolutely love it. So absolutely not sure what to do with it because I do need a bigger van. It's just not the best time in my life to make a big investment. And it is quite a big investment when I've already outlaid quite a lot. I'm in the process of buying all new camera gear and stuff as well. Um, but it is a bit, it is a little bit beautiful. I can tell just by his page, he's the sort of guy that really looks after things. That's it there. It's a big old VW transporter. Right, now we have all of these pieces made up. Well, I say all of them, we've got a few made up. We've still got loads more that we need to make. And I tried to be really cheeky. I tried to use my spit nail gun, which fires these 27 mil pins. And they do fire into the concrete, but it's not good fixing, not for Unistrat. It feels very janky and cowboy. And now I'm not working for Artisan anymore. It just doesn't feel right to, to do that. Um, <laughs> But what we're doing instead, we've set up the laser line, as you can see here. That is going all the way back to the laser there. Let's try not to burn out my sensor. And we're doing it the old school method, aren't we, Pete? Yeah. Plug, plug and screw. Plug and screw. All oh, my days. We're watching Back to the Future right now, or? <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me my future? Of course I can. Yeah? Your movie star fella. Oh, thank you. I thought you were going to say high cholesterol, but I'll take that. Um, right, so it's very nice to actually have a proper work base to work from. This is crazy. Usually we're underneath a cupboard somewhere, but we've got the board going in as well. I'll show you what the guys are doing out there. They're doing a cracking job, absolutely smashing it out. So you see there, they've got the cable all the way out and through that hole there, they've been using the D-line clips, which I think look pretty awesome because you can barely see that they're, they're actually there. The cable comes in through the wall here. And these guys are absolutely smashing it out. So you've got Lucas and Reese blitzing this out. What have you got going on here? You've got the three phase Matty going yeah, Matty there. Device mm -hmm. there. Matty device going there. And then off of that, out to all the chargers. Right, so now they're getting the main supply in. That just leaves us to get these Unistrap brackets mounted. And I can't procrastinate anymore with the camera because. Uh, I think I'm gonna get rattled. <laughs> You're never gonna use me ever again. We'll see, we'll, we'll see, so you go. So I bought this vest. This thing is not sponsored. Um, I oh, bought yeah. it literally from Screwfix. But I have been called a lot of names. Everything from Steve Irwin Jr., which I take as a massive compliment because the guy's a legend, to, what did you ask earlier? You called it a fishing vest. Yeah, this. a fishing vest. But, but when they see the efficiency, I, I say that while I'm like faffing around, but when they see the efficiency, you're going to be begging for one. Exactly. This pocket filled with plugs. Yeah. This pocket filled with screws and washers. All your pencils and pens. Pencils. And when I wash my oh, trousers, the most annoying thing is when I wash you my trousers or I change, I've got to empty everything out, ruin the washing machine, fill it up with fixings. This, I can just zip off, hang it up, Done. wash my clothes, put it back on again. I don't really wash my clothes. <laughs> Pete don't either. I did smell something earlier. <laughs> so how have you guys done this job then? How have you worked it out? Like, is it through the grant or is it through yeah. something else? Let me bring the so, audience a bit closer to you. Yeah, so basically what we're doing here is we, these type of jobs, just to sort of jump back a bit, they take quite a while to come to fruition. So we, we came down a year ago from now 
and um, obviously we've got some government grants available. The two in particular that they're eligible for here is the EV infrastructure grant for residential car parks, which gives you £500 per bay that you make EV ready. And then there's the additional 350 grant per working charger you put in. So you've got potential for 850 that's per bay. Bad. That's a huge grant. It's incredible. Um, so in this particular scenario, we've only got one person that actually has an EV here. So what we're doing is and we're putting 29 dummies in and one working, which enables us to get that full grant, which is over, it's worth over 15,000 pound. So. I'm so glad that all the money from the government is going to people that need it most, people that can afford electric cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so it's been a long time coming, but there's a lot of grants here. Um, and what we've also said to the residents here, if anyone does want a working one put in while we're on site, we'll give them an absolute bargain to have it put in because we're already here. Yeah. The infrastructure's going in. It's not going to take much longer to put in the actual charging robot instead of but the But you were saying earlier that they got confused with your grant email. Yes, so one of the like one of the chairmen here sent out uh, an email and mistakes happen and it was said that they could have one installed for 350. That's actually the grant value to the customer if they have one installed. So we've had to go back and say no, it's actually this amount, but we can do it for this while we're here. And um, yeah, we've since been getting quite a few emails come in. Okay, so you're not gonna, I don't even think you'd be able to buy the charge you're installing for 350. No. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That was a very but, generous business. Yeah, it was a very generous offer. A bit of, bit of miscommunication, but we got that resolved quickly because obviously cool. we don't want people to be left unhappy. So. I don't know what I look like, but I definitely look like something or someone that needs help with these on. But yeah, we've got these all done to a point. And now it's time to mount the tray. So to mount the tray, it is as simple as using channel nuts inside. I say as simple as, <laughs> the holes don't line up. It's Having definitely not fun. as simple as. But you have these which colloquially, colloquially, <laughs> colloquial. Colloquially. Oh, I'm going back. <laughs> On your bike. Their colonoscopy known as um, Zebs or Zebedees, I think because of the little spring off the magic roundabout. But yeah, they just slot in there. Although no, these aren't Zebs because they don't have the spring. So I'm gonna call them channel nuts. Yeah. And then these little M6 gutter bolts or roofing bolts go into them. And then they mount in. I took the springs off. Just like light. that. Because of the... But the only thing is, if you look down the lengths of these beams, that is not an effect of the camera. They don't line up. And some of the sets are so awkward and small, you can't really buy a prefabricated system that's small enough to do that. So I'm gonna cut it myself. I think that'll be easier. In theory, I'm gonna just start really small. As long as I do the same on both sides, same cut and fold it in on itself, Oh, it's probably it's going to be the length of this which will dictate like how many degrees the set is. So I'm going to mark a straight line across and then oh, going to do a centimetre that way, centimetre that way, cut, fold it in, whatever that yeah, distance that is way. there, centimetre that way, centimetre that way, fold in. I'll show you and it will make sense. This is the moment of truth. Have we tested this? No. no. This yeah. is live. Actually, what am I talking about? It, don't fear, I'm just going to cut the clip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, it again. This is, um, do you mind just holding that on there? I'll use my Corey height. There we go. That is going there. And that is going there. Look. Oh, get away with it, mate. Get away with it. God, that's that harsh. That's millimetre perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good for me. Well, it'll look great for my house. <laughs> so now the sets are done, these guys can just smash them in and get them in. I really appreciate as well earlier the uh, the little toe you gave me, Alex. Oh, no worries, mate. About time we have a go on that, I think. You, you want you want to have a go on it? Uh, hell yeah. 
I don't know if you'll be able to handle the speed. <laughs> what was the top speed? The top speed? What, with them? That I've got Pirelli sticky tyres on it at the minute, mate. <laughs> I reckon for you, no joke, probably 60, 70 miles an hour. What about what about for a guy weighing in at about 111 kilos? Oh, probably hour? probably 75. But that is <laughs> that is going straight off of the cliffs over there. That is, yeah, <laughs> you're probably not going to get it on a flat. It needs to be a severe decline. Yeah. Sort of like if we take it to where those, those goats are out on the east cliff there, we'll just take east them out. cliff would be perfect. You, I reckon you'll hit 70 <laughs> there. Yeah, not yeah. a massive amount of falling time. Do you like a bit of metal work? You can't beat metal munching. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right, probably start getting the cables through and stuff now. Yeah, I, I didn't realise that Lucas was your son. I thought that Alex here was your son. <laughs> He's my older brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a few days allowed for this job. I don't reckon we're going to need all the days. Oh, the silence says everything. You can just hear the rattle of the fridge compressor. We've got all this cable here, <laughs> which has got to be used. I'm going to create a challenge. I don't know what it's going to be, but there's going to be a challenge. Uh, the question is, will you accept it? I'll accept it now without even knowing what it is. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to Butlins. <laughs> as long as it's the one in Weymouth. What I find funny is, oh, they have one in Weymouth. No, I was seeing the one in Skegness. Skegness, you know, I think anything that rhymes with skankiness can't be good. Um, <laughs> The customer's been so particular, this one. I'm sorry, I, I would never talk badly about customers, but this is your customer. <laughs> but they've been very particular about how we run the cable. And then when you just take a little minute, so I'm, I'm very confident they're not subscribers to this channel. Yeah. I, I, I'm like pretty sure. Yeah. Um, when you look at the cables like that, that they're from, where they've got like droopy, droopy conduit, this oval conduit, which has been literally stuck up with expanding foam. I don't know what reference method that is. <laughs> and then they're <laughs> dictating to you how to run their cables, apparently. I didn't hear that, but yeah, I find that quite, quite it's a giggle. One, one of those, isn't it? We'll get it done. They're going to love it at the end of it. It um, is. Are you going to use expanding foam to stick yours up? If we run out of D-lines, maybe. Okay, <laughs> no. sweet. <laughs> There you have it, that is the set completed. So that's that little set, it's not too bad is it? It's just very tricky doing it, such a small little piece. Let's get the cable through. You can see the absolute state of the workspace. It's good though, it's a good sign. We've been busy, we've actually been working. It's not always Instagram pretty, but at the minute we are just measuring off. So that is going through to there. I'll tell you what is very handy, I have in my fisherman's pocket. Got a distance measurer that Milwaukee sent me and I thought why on earth does an electrician need a distance measurer and then you start doing things like this measuring off a cable run like to there to that wall over there to the little red dot bosh 12, 12 meters doing the cable measurements just so much easier so the mission for today is to try and get this run done because it's as you can tell probably by the state of the video been a little bit all over the place doing this and then going and helping there and then coming back and doing this and also it's the first day on the job which I feel is always just a bit slow because you find your place but we've got a system now I'm going to go ahead and drill them all and Alex and or Pete are going to come behind and actually put them in all right so that is all the unistrap mounted up here now um, throughout I'll show you that so these are mounted all the way along and back I need to cut a t-piece in there above where Pete is standing and the cables have started being running through as well so they're ready to go ready to start cabling up and get them ready home time now see you tomorrow morning Okay, it's a new day. The sun has risen and uh, it has risen on a great day for some cabling. Me and Al over here, or 
Big Al, as he's asked me to call him. <laughs> I find that a bit weird, to be honest, but you know, whatever floats you go. Um, and we've got the cables through. I say we've got the cables through. We've not really had very much to do with that, have we? No. The guys over there have got the cables through, but we've got the tray in now. So you can see that is running all the way along to both ends. It's still nice and early in the morning, so I think we're doing quite well. So now it is time to get these cables in, but I have an idea to save some time. But I've got something quite funny that's happened. Actually, it's not funny. This is really unprofessional, but I'm using the spit nail gun along there. Now, spit don't sponsor me, okay? And I was really hoping that by using their gun, they would sponsor me. However, you know the whole fiasco with pew, 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 firing them, using them as a target? I now got a mail from them saying, we do not endorse unsafe use of our tool, and now we cannot sponsor you. So that's sad. Um, and their nails are quite expensive, but I guess that does say that I do really quite like the gun because I am still using it. Like, we actually paid for fixings yesterday. Yeah. It's a very middle class, <laughs> get things for free thing to say. We actually paid for fixings. But yeah, we did. Um, oh, actually, no, you paid for them. No, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. I'm still, I'm still getting their nails for free. Um, right, so the plan is D-line clip along there. D-line is another brand that don't sponsor me to be on this channel. They have in the past, but they don't right now. But they're just fantastic clips. I actually genuinely like them. Um, and we'll be using the D-line clips down to each one of these posts, which is going to have a charger on it, an easy charger. Um, and we have this, which is a drum of 10 mil five core, I presume. It is um, because we have 22 kilowatt chargers. Are you ready to get cable in? Hell yeah. <laughs> Should I get my laser level out? Yeah, why not? Where is it? Well, it's in my van, but it's only about five meters away. <laughs> That's what it is when you're six foot six. 5K run now. <laughs> I've taken up running, like actual running, not running away from things. And uh, so far, I'm I've got absolutely all the terrible at it. Word, like I run fast, they track short distances. Everywhere. But I'm really not a long distance runner. Yeah, so but not gonna be in there. I've made quite a few comments regarding the yeah, uh, state that my body yeah. is in. I've started using Peloton. It feels a bit like Dora the Explorer for fat people. Putting myself in that boat. I felt like, do you know what? It's time to take command of my health. So that's what I'm doing. And I've got a Strava profile. And I try and <laughs> put things on there to motivate people. Did you feel motivated by my post? Yeah, I did like your post last night about um seasoning the flies next time you go on your oh run. yeah yeah so i went for a run around the lake five kilometers did all of them all five of them and um <laughs> there was a lot of flies a lot i swallowed a lot so i just was suggesting that maybe next time i bring some seasoning just to improve that <laughs> but um fortunately i was running with some other people and yeah they were they were norwegian and it, everyone knows norwegians actually eat flies as one of their national dishes so that was pretty cool that was know. pretty easy yeah well now you do <laughs> apart from the loading bench but sign in dash what you got a mint yeah it's bad oh i got one no cool you got one no i've got he's got a mint oh, i haven't had a mint and he's complaining he didn't get given one. Oh, he gave me one did you get one <laughs> yeah He's going to fit in well. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably one of the best mints I've ever had. I never get a mint. Yeah, you do. Sometimes I even buy you your own pack of chewing gum. So you That's just the <laughs> You're a good kid. He is a good kid. I bought my well. Dad. <laughs> I wouldn't use that word. That term has different connotations nowadays. Yeah. I know you're a bit past knowing that, but trust me. <laughs> Or maybe you do know that. I don't judge. <laughs> yeah. I just can't believe your hair transplant works so well, Alex. <laughs> your breath's almost bad enough you could qualify to be a geography teacher. <laughs> you, you're not allowed to legally do that job unless your breath stinks. <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk badly about my geography teacher because I only had one and just in case on the off chance he sees this. But the breath was, mate, it was severe. And he'd always lean over you. Like, yeah, why do they do you'd that? You'd smell him before you'd see it. It just, yeah. the arms would just appear like. 
How you doing? <laughs> right, he'd never use consonants. It was always. <sighs> he'd find ways of making consonants soft. I, that's really good. <laughs> I bet you were one of those kids in the park when you were younger, just throwing your weight around. <laughs> Mate, I was the kid <laughs> with no friends playing acoustic guitar. <laughs> Not much has changed. How is your band going? I don't have a band. They have me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just do music for fun now. I've never mentioned yeah. that on this channel before, though. So oh, you no. must be a true fan. Do you want a t-shirt? <laughs> You're not going to charge me for it. No, I'm going to definitely well, charge you. We've got a lot of there. I have no interest as a career. I love doing cable tray too much. That's, a, that's it. That's all you need. Yeah. One more in life is a. Can you hold this cable back, fella? Oh, mate, that breath is coming. <laughs> I might fart just so I don't have to smell it. <laughs> yeah, please. I have a feeling it will smell better than that. I'm going to tell you loads of little known facts about Scandinavia now, though. I've got tons. Yeah, do it. You want one? Yeah, um, by law, everyone in Norway and Sweden has to have a canary bird inside their house. For gas. For, gas. for gas. Yeah, for gas. Yeah. I told Pete an interesting fact the other day, and you can look this up. It's true. It's an old American law. In, I can't remember the state, so I'll find out that you know, but in one particular state, it's illegal for more than three dogs to congregate in the same area at the same time without a permit. Yeah, but they do look shady. <laughs> yeah. well, I just can't imagine someone actually doing anything about three dogs being on the corner of the street. Yeah, and what permit you'd require. Yeah, does the dog get the permit or does the owner of the dog get the permit? <laughs> I wish we could do the same for people from Birmingham. <laughs> but I've tried, but it didn't go through. We've had a lot of um, big talk on this site since I've been there. A lot of challenging to wrestle, a lot of challenging, to, a lot of masculine energy, um, which obviously I'm completely comfortable with and used to, <laughs> but not in that way. I'm, oh, I don't yeah, know. But um, I, I reckon we just need to settle it. And obviously we can't have a massive fight on camera. It wouldn't be right. <laughs> and I hate violence, but I reckon we set another challenge. I reckon we go tomorrow night. Actually, no, I'm not telling you because otherwise you'll be prepared. Tomorrow night there's going to be a challenge and we'll see where the men are made. He's going to hatch up, isn't he? That's what he said, happening. Yeah, he's giving himself an I'm advantage. Anyway, I don't lose. I'll okay, you it. don't lose. All right. Well, I say we go down to the water. Last one out is well, the biggest sissy. Well, perfect. You're going to lose then, aren't you? That's just <laughs> survival of the fittest, well. mate. It's nature. Nature. Well, I'll carry you to the water because I'm used to All carrying right. you anyway. Perfect. So we have our challenge tomorrow. Cold water dunk. No, oh, yeah, we need. Unless you're willing to wear your work clothes, no swimming clothes allowed. So either, as in like no wetsuit or anything. No wetsuit. You've either got to go in in your work clothes or just in your swimming shorts. Last one out the water. Anyone's <laughs> welcome. So we're using plastic cable ties along a lot of the run. And then every other cable tie, we've got metal around it. The reason why we need metal around it is because it's on the ceiling. Um, if there was ever a fire down here and the fire crew needed to come in, you don't want all the plastic cable ties to melt and for all of the cables to fall on the floor. So we have metal cable ties onto metal containment just to hold it up in the event of a fire. Which in a car garage, especially now, is super possible. Have you got in every other? I tried to do like two, two lengths, yeah, two of these yeah. intervals of the plastic and then the metal in between. It's about 300 to 600 intervals sort of thing. Have you found anything that's helped with running a business? Like with starting up, any advice you'd give to someone else? Um, the one thing I would say, and to me, well, I think to us both, is really important is that what we do is when we've, when we've been paid by a job, we pay off the materials for that job straight away. Yeah. So any costs we have going out, we get rid of straight away. And then what we've got left is what we know is ours. Yeah, I, I do that. I, um, I hate feeling like I owe someone money. Lots of people I know don't do that. And then they get themselves in a bad financial situation with a, what's the saying? Robin Paul to pay Pete, yeah. whatever that saying is. It's just, it's just not a nice way to be. No, that's sound advice. What about you? Me? If you could give someone some advice. Just do it. 
if there's something you want to do, don't delay. Like, yeah, you're always going to have a reason. If you are working for someone and your boss can do it, then you can do it. Is your boss superhuman compared to you? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? No, they've exactly. got the same 24 hours in a day that you have. They wake up under the same sun. Okay, maybe they have some circumstances that are better. Maybe they're born into money or they I'm not uh, like, it does take a certain type of person, obviously, and you've got to be brave and be prepared to yeah. not always make money as well. Yeah, like, exactly. You have days where you kill it and you have other days. I've had days where I probably would have made more work in like, you know? Yeah, in a supermarket. We, we wish we did this years ago, but you can't change that. Like, we, the advice that I would give, especially to younger ones, is do it now. While you're still living at home, you've got nothing to lose. Yeah. Like, unless you're helping your parents pay bills and things and they, they require that, it's still going to be the cheapest time of your life living at home generally. So you've got nothing to lose. Worst case, it fails. Okay, well, yeah. then go and work for someone and you've then got a bit more experience. So yeah. I see it as a no-brainer to start your own business. My, my other advice, not that you're asking for more, but I will give it anyway, is do not get a business coach. Whatever you do, do not get a business coach. But I'm not against mentors. Mentors are great. If you've got someone who's already started a successful business and is rich and just wants to help you out, fair enough. But all these business coaches, ask them, okay, how many successful electrical businesses have you actually started? Or any business? Have you got any businesses that you can show me that you've started, that you've been successful with? Um, and then I might believe you a little bit more. Whereas if you're just sending me things that I see on memes online <laughs> from these stupid yeah. meme accounts with like a picture of Thomas Shelby and a lion with, <laughs> wake up and go get it. You only have this many days in your life. Like just cheesy motivational quotes and you want to charge a business two grand to give them yeah. that. I think it is criminal, genuinely. Yeah, you're right. Because if you're successful enough yeah. that you're just killing it at business, why are you charging me to teach me how to do it? Why don't you just go and run your successful business yeah, and yeah. make loads of money? Make loads of money yourself. It's a scam. The whole thing is a scam. Because the, th like, the, the other thing is not only have they not got the experience, they've never had electrical businesses, they've never had yeah. any of that. The other thing that's criminal is the people that they're targeting are people who are younger or starting up a business, yeah. might have remortgaged their house or whatever yeah. to go into it. It's not like people with already really big successful businesses. For example, Adam Gilmore. That's correct. The guy from AG Electrical who I went to Ireland and did some work for. That guy is one of the nicest guys you'll ever mm. meet. He completely was like open to mentor me was like any advice you ever need business tax blah blah yeah. blah whatever is like just chuck it my way i'll help you that's a mentor the people that use them are the people that uh, probably got their house on the line and they're stressed about losing their business so yeah. they go and get last advice result. they could have found on the internet for free yeah. so i strongly disagree with it so my advice is don't get any coach don't get scammed just like ask people if someone emailed me and was like, I've started a business, not that I'm the best person to ask because, you know, I'm not exactly a millionaire. But if someone emailed me and says, I've got a question, should I go back registered? I've got a question, is it worth going limited? How do I go limited? Anything like that. I, and I'm pretty sure Alex and any other decent person who owns a company would answer you that for completely free. So that's my advice. ceiling so strong that literally bent my nail like it's just burning out drill bits left right and center all right so we're getting on well I'm ready to start cabling up these this bank of charges now so basically we've got 10 charges ish per blank at the minute it's looking like because there's 30 charges in total, it's looking like it might have to be two sets of 11 and one set of eight, just for efficiency. But each one of these car, car charges is three phase, 22 kilowatts. However, we're going to be installing like a load balancing device. So it will create like a bus and then all of those charges will balance themselves out so we don't completely 
overload the supply. But yeah, this right here is a tool that I bought from the local zoo and it works absolutely fantastically. I don't want to tell you what it's for, um, just because it's not really appropriate for the younger audience, but I guess you could probably figure it out for yourself. Um, and I'd like to issue a formal apology to the elephant enclosure if you need this. I will give it back. You see that right there? That is the other half of this drill bit. Just in case you thought I was exaggerating how hard these walls are. They are crazy hard. It's just eaten through drill bits. And these are quite good quality drill bits as well. They weren't cheap. Um, and bending my spit nails. So they're really tough walls. It's a bit slow going. There's an interesting thing, which I'm gonna call it now, but I guarantee it's gonna be a thing soon, whether or not you can put EV chargers underneath places where there's dwellings above, because the fire implications of that. So if you imagine, obviously cars can catch fire, like the petrol engine, but it's much easier to fight the fire when it's a petrol engine or a diesel engine. When a battery catches fire, there's nothing you can do really, and the water runoff from it turns into hydrochloric acid, so it's pretty sketchy stuff. You don't want that to catch fire. And if you get thermal runaway on an EV battery when it's charging, um, all that potential energy, like humongous batteries, five, six times what is probably in your house if you have a home battery running away. There's more and more regulations coming in about insurers saying it needs to be far away from the building. So I wonder if that's going to impact being inside like undercrofts, but we'll see. You heard it here first. That was new only this morning. <laughs> Me and my fisherman vest have done quite well. We've uh, got a lot of these cabled up now, ready for second fixing. I don't know if I could call them the dream team. It's probably a <laughs> dream of some sort. They're over here. Living the dream. Yeah, how are you getting on? Not too bad. Are you enjoying my little setup? Look, that's my beautiful laser up there. If you, if you haven't seen that already, that is my little M12 Milwaukee laser. And what's your opinion on it? It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, is it I'm the bestest? It is probably the best laser I've come across. Yeah, it actually is. It genuinely is. Yeah, and I, I've, I've used quite a few. I've had quite a few lasers. Pete, what do you think of my laser? I've seen better, mate, but it's not too bad. You've seen, where have oh. you seen better? Star Trek, maybe. <laughs> Pete, I actually got you something. You know how you were telling me earlier how you love to catch crabs? Um, <laughs> I should have told you that. No, well, I thought I'd just oh, help you. Crabbing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, you're oh, welcome. I wish Reese was here right That's now. Is that so we can watch you boys run into the sea later? Yeah, because, well, we're going for a swim, and you said crap. you said that you can't swim, and I felt really bad. I thought, oh, man. Well, sit on the groin. You could do a bit of crabbing. I'm going to teach him how to use it, because on our electrical, the thing is, there's a lot of young people that watch this channel, and it's not just about electricalness. It's right. about life skills, isn't it, partly? Okay. So anyway, now we're just going to crack on with the job. Enjoy. Oh, he's just gonna leave me hanging. Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> right, so that is the carports pretty much wired up now. So the other guys are down at the minute in the car park getting that done. And I am here with Lucas and uh, we're gonna be doing the main side of it. So I'll talk you through that. When you think of 30 odd car chargers, all potentially pulling 22 kilowatts, think in your head at the minute with a calculator, how many kilowatts, it's a lot of power. Um, but the whole thing is only on a C63 breaker and I'll explain how that is as we go along. But basically, we've got the main head here. The plan now is we're gonna drop that out, but this will kill some of the power to the side. So we're gonna do that last. So we're just getting the board prepped. Um, Lucas has already terminated this armoured in. Um, this is the supply out. We're gonna get the other one in, we're gonna get the tails in and everything ready. And then we can, um, we can juice it all up. But I thought I'd give this a try. This is my hole puncher. Right, so that is the hole ready for the guide. And you see that was a lot easier and quicker than drilling a 
um, a 40 mil or a 50 mil hole. So let me demonstrate now. So now you get your little um, punch set. So this is the die and the actual cutting bit here. That pops through. That then screws on. I'm just demonstrating with the smaller one because I've not actually used this Milwaukee kit yet. Then this will pop onto there, like so. And then, now you can see it is a super clean hole. There's like no burrs, no sharp edges, there's no heat as well. And also, no starret bit disappearing off into the board. All the bits will be collected inside of there. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll do the bigger one now, and then we'll get wiring. I've chose not to come straight underneath just because it's. I always find it a faff without a spreader box to try and get the cables actually into a decent position. And not overbend the copper either, obviously. But maybe like that, just one little swoop might do it. Let's try that. It's important as well to always make sure you bend tails before you cut them. Because you might cut them straight and bend them. And then by the time you've actually finished bending it, you've only got like a couple of mil of copper going into the terminal. All right, so the tails are in. Now it is the time to get this bad boy out right here. It is so hot, like having this fisherman's jacket on definitely doesn't help things, but it is so hot. I'll tell you one thing I like though, let me show you this. This packet is perfect for, I have pistachio nuts in here, right? The worst thing about eating pistachio nuts, <laughs> where do you put all the shells? It's a quandary for people nationwide, worldwide. Grab myself one of nature's yum yums. I'm gonna pop that bad boy open. I'm gonna chop down that. What do I do with the shells? Do I do the, what the inconsiderate pigs that don't wear these jackets do and just lob it on the floor? L lob it into your little sister's toy box. Nah. See, I have a shell holder right there. And right now, it's full of these shells. And I'm a pistachio eating, Volvic strawberry water flavored drinking machine. It's Kirchhoff's law. Pistachios are good for you. We'll pop this off. Yeah, all good, mate. All good, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So then in that case, we can switch this off as well. Cool. Turn off some power on that. Yeah, that is all it's doing. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that is all it's doing. Okay, cool. Do not turn we can, off we can take these fuses out, but you want to be careful. Do you know what they often have behind them? Um, asbestos. Oh, that's what I was about to say, is it asbestos? Yeah. So we just it out gently. Yeah, is it, it just is. doing that? Because power turned off on here. There you go. So you see there, asbestos. So we don't want to disturb that. So I'm going to just carefully put that back in. Asbestos is okay as long as you don't breathe it in. It's sort of, the, the actual material itself is fantastic and it does its job well. It's damaged. Exactly, you just don't want to break it. So I'm not going to disturb that. Um, that does limit our options a bit though. Right, so we have a bit of a situation which is not exactly to plan, which is the case in the nature of having a trade, especially one where there is risks involved when you're working around other trades. But this box here, it comes off of this, which is called a bus bar cabinet. Um, and inside of that, there's gonna be lots of copper bars and then they kind of tap off with tails into various things. So that comes out of there into here and then through these 60 amp fuses um, out into there. But I would have liked to have replaced these tails for proper sized tails, um, but that's not really gonna be doable. Technically it's okay on a 10 mil earth and these tails, um, they're 16 mil. I would have liked them to have been 25 mil, but on a 60 amp fuse, they should be okay. We'll just have to leave a note saying, we recommend this is fixed but this is full of asbestos, so I don't really want to disturb or touch that. As you can see, one, the one fuse I took out has got asbestos in it and it's not broken, but I don't really want to take the others out because for all I know, I might take one out and it's all broken and release the particles into the air and then we both die of mesothelioma. 
Um, but the other annoying thing, there's a lift shaft just there, and that, annoyingly, somehow is also powered from this. So yeah. we're now going to have to alert the residents, make sure the door is down, prop the door open. So the plan is, pop this off, like as in switch it off, leave it in place. I'm going to take these tails out, I'm going to use something called a Henley block, which is basically a 100 amp glorified connector block. Um, that is designed for use on these types of cables, which we call tails. Um, and then we'll extend out of those down and into the board. Right, so we are pretty much done in here now, except there's another little snag. Okay, let me show you what that is. So I've got all of the, the tails in. I managed to make the switch over pretty painless. That wasn't too bad. But looking around me now, all of this junk that's left here, this has all got asbestos on it. Don't really want to touch it or hold it near my face. But that asbestos is flaked around the place. And that's not cool. That's really annoying in fact, because I've got stuff all over the floor because I'm an electrician. And I was thinking, oh, it's cool. I'll quickly get a brush and sweep and hoover up. There's no way I'm sweeping up in there. That sounds like the ultimate electrician excuse to the reason why I'm not sleeping. But if there is asbestos scattered around that floor, first thing I'm doing, fortunately, <laughs> I'm wearing cheap shoes that are already trashed. I'm going to throw these shoes away or at least thoroughly wash them and I'm going to have a proper clear out of that cupboard because I'm a bit unimpressed by that. But yeah, there's asbestos everywhere. Like that some contractor, I'm not going to say Muppet of a contractor because they might not have been trained and they might not have known that, but all these, there's like fuse carriers and bits that are up there that have been moved around and on the back of all of these is asbestos. So you got to be careful with that guys, something for us electrical dudes to watch out for to protect ourselves. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, I've got the, the old earth lug there on the outside. Let's go check in on them in the car park. There we go, so these car chargers are flying in. Got Pete over there, labelling them and commissioning them. I'll show you the app, how you set them up, but these are the easy chargers. And that's cool because they are easy to do. Al, show us the app. Show us how you set these up. So this is the installer app. It's really simple to use. Some may say it's easy. Um, you create the site and then all you want to do is add the main fuse data. So we've got 60 amp three phase here. And then you can add in the amount of circuits. Because we've got 22 kilowatt chargers, you can have up to 101 chargers per circuit. I'm not sure why you would, but you can. We've got uh, about Why not 10%. just 100? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's as simple as adding the circuits in, you go in, add the back plates, um, and then you literally just upload it to the cloud once so, you're all done. So you've got the three circuits there for here. We've got the three circuits. So just to clarify that, we come out with the 63 amp breaker into the Mati device, which I'll show you. In the Mati device, we've got three radials going off with these banks of chargers basically. Correct. So it makes it a lot easier because we're going to be installing a ALM device which like manages the load across all of the chargers and then it balances it out to make sure that you're not going to blow the supply and blow the 63 amps. And at the minute a lot of these chargers are actually dummy heads. So they're wired up ready to go when they actually get the charging robot that will literally just clip in to the holster. But yeah this is not a sponsored video by the way. It just is a good solution for this for this car park, so it's what we've decided to go for. I'm just gonna stay here until it gets so awkward. <laughs> I'm not awkward, but I was just looking at your beer belly, actually. Well, I was... <laughs> My only real criticism with these devices here are that they've got top entry, which from being, well, actually I've drive past many times in Stavanger where these things are, well, at least where they're based. They're kind of designed for the Norwegian market. So my only criticism would be 
the UK support isn't amazing. You have to go via um, your wholesaler where you bought them from um, or via your supplier unless you're buying like a pallet of them. And the top entry, I don't really get that. I feel maybe with the cable that you use in Norway, that sheaf cable, it probably makes sense. But for our cables, it's a bit of a nightmare, especially if you're using SWA, you kind of have to either earth it the other end or find another solution, which isn't ideal. So I don't feel they're completely designed for the UK market, but they definitely have their applications and their uses. And overall, a really good charger. And that right there is the Mati device that I'm talking about. So basically the supply comes in, that is the 63 amp line. It goes through all of the open devices, comes out of the three three-phase breakers, and then off three circuits to their respective radials. Oh dear, you boys are following me like a bad smell. I was following the bad smell actually. Is that because you want to go for a swim? <laughs> You've got some crabs to catch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we doing it? Are we doing it, Boss Let's, let's do it. It's literally yeah. two minutes away. We're doing it. We're doing it. I'm getting the crabs. You're going wet. All right, epic transition into the blue. Excuse me. Bosh, go on Alex, you can put the towel down now. <laughs> so do you want to talk about why you're not supporting my swimming career? This isn't a beer. You didn't want that beer? No, this isn't a beer. Oh, it's an alcohol free one. Why are we not supporting your swimming career? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got a sponsored good. swim to Liechtenstein coming up and have you, you guys are, yeah. There you have. I have. I think you have, actually, I saw that. It, it, where did you see it? Online. Online? Yeah, yeah, well anyway, I've got a sponsored swim to Liechtenstein coming up and um, you're not supporting it, so um, I'm going to get in the water today. Are you still going to go try and get some crabs? I can't be long. Be okay. Yes. Perfect. Now, before we do our um, little swimmy swim, Alex, how did you send me all of the details from today? Well, that was Tradify, of course. You sent me all the details via Tradify. Why is that? Is that because you use Tradify? I use Tradify. We use Tradify. And right now, this is what's called a sponsored segment. <laughs> and that's because Tradify have sponsored us. Absolutely. And uh, I have to say, it's pretty good. How have you found it? It's, it's amazing. I'm not just saying that. I had to convince Pete to get on it. And then since, since we've been on it, it's changed our, our lives. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It, yeah. It's genuinely the best job management tool around. Right, don't, don't, don't oversell it, yeah. yeah. All right, Other nice than. one. <laughs> Should we go for a swim? It. The question is, really, are you going to take your top off when you swim or are you going to be that insecure kid at the pool? Mate, he's got guns. I won't take it off because I've got the guns. Oh, I see. You're going to see the guns. That's... And this is why it's good to work with other people because I wouldn't have even thought of that. You see, with bodies like ours, <laughs> if we took our top off, that would completely distract people from the electrical oh, work, which yeah. is what this channel is about. So actually, <laughs> it's all about we'll, we'll be the insecure kid at the pool. We'll be yeah. Mooby McMoog face. Not that that was my name at school. <laughs> <laughs> right, swim time. And with that, the working week was done. Alex got to have his little swim. Pete got crabs. All in all, a beautiful week working together. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.